Well, I think some of you know me, some of you may not do. I'm John Evans, I'm an Edwards Best of Covers, simply altering them Hale, Hale Barnes, Bowden, and Dunn. So I just want to talk about three things. The burglaries that we've been having, uh, the robbery, we've been having Hale Village, the year of what she's been taken, and then linked onto that was a really nasty, uh, aggravated burglary stroke robbery in the house that um, Hemingway was talking about. <laughs> So I'll talk about those, but I'll also talk about the Britannia Hotel in Hale, because there have been some concerns yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that because I think the concerns are unfounded, but I'll talk you through that. And at the very end, I'll also talk a little bit more about the knife crime and what's been done to combat that, long term and short term. So, burglars. Burglars, you'll always have burglars in Trafford. Uh, I've been working in Trafford for 20 years, and we've always had burglars that occur in Simply. Down in Altrincham, Hail Hail Bounds, just because of its location to motorways and other people. You will always have that problem. All you can do is reduce the numbers of those, they will always happen. And that's what we have been doing. We've got our proactive team. Uh, the uh, proactive team has been putting <coughs> once a month a proactive week where they go out and they go out at night, so you won't see them because they're out at night. And they work with police from Cheshire. Cheshire have got a really good roads crime policing unit unmarked cars they can work with us as well because the same offenders that are working on us are working in cheshire they work with our tactical vehicle intercept unit again unmarked cars they're really good at spotting a cloned a stolen car or a car that just shouldn't be in the right area because we're driving it so we work with them we work with our special constabulary so the people who come in and volunteer they will come and work as well and the drone unit so if we get a, um, a thieves on or suspicious activity Rather than have to turn out the helicopter that costs thousands and thousands of pounds, we've got a drone that can use infrared, we can box off an air and can look for this. So they've been doing that pretty much once a month um, since their inception. We didn't do one in September because of other pressures, but they have been doing that. We did one in August, there was a crime spike in August. Your stats show that. We're aware of that, it wasn't just down here, it was everywhere in Trafford, I suspect it's everywhere in Manchester. August you get a spike because people are away on holiday, so people come in and do those. So they ran a week of action using all those resources. But they locked up seven people, they executed warrants, and they recovered £80,000 worth of cash. <coughs> and we saw the drop off at the end of September. That might have been because of their activity, because it wasn't just down in Hale. They were also arresting people up in Flixland as well. Um, but it also could have been just the time of year. We will expect another um, rise in burglaries when the clocks go back because people are still like and it's gone dark. So that's when you need those timers in your house so the lights are coming on, even when you're not there, to keep the impression that you're there, all around home security. So that's burglary, and what we do about that, that's a continuing fight against the burglars. And if I've got time, I'll talk about home watch, because this is a partnership between us and the community, because we can't be everywhere. Our numbers have been reduced, we can't be everywhere to do that, but we need good, vibrant home watch uh, schemes where people are looking out for each other, and discussing home security, so A, people can't get in your house, and B, you are phoning us about your <coughs> activity. Any questions around burglary? Okay. <coughs> okay, no problem. <coughs> yeah, so we had some machete robberies in the Hale village where a road watch has been taken, and then we also had the real nasty aggravated burglary that was out of Walton. <coughs> Seven robbers in the street, uh, what we've done about those, so two things, we did the covert activity where we had our proxy unit in plain clothes down in the area. We also had the TVIU down there as well. From a deterrent point of view, we've got the horses, we've got the mounted down because nothing, you can see a horse, you can't miss a horse if it's in the area. The people saw those. Um, we've got our specials again down there, we've had our staff patrolling down there, so we had high visibility, but that may deter it, it won't catch you the criminal. Behind that, um, Detective Sergeant called Matt Gregory has done a huge piece of work, a really good piece of work in investigating the people who may have been responsible for that and the people who are responsible for that. So for the Rolex robberies and the aggravated burglary, there have been six people arrested. Three of those have been eliminated, we don't think they're involved with it. Two people have been charged and remanded and are no longer a threat. The third one's been arrested and is still being investigated because we haven't quite got the evidence to get across the threshold for a charge, but we're confident that that will happen. And there's one who knows he's wanted, there is sufficient to charge him, and he is circulating and we're looking for him. 
So we are disrupting the people who are doing these offences by arresting and executing warrants. The investigation continues. And we are putting high visibility patrolling in the area to reassure yourselves, but also um, to deter criminals. Uh, and that's what we're doing in relation to those. So we've had charges of us, which is really positive. These are people who are going to go to prison for a very, very long time. Any questions around? When was that? When was that? When were these people taken off the street? Um, Monday. Okay. I come up at five o'clock in the morning. My staff had been working at Hot in the town in the city centre, that's the, the conference, till seven the night before, volunteered to come in early and take part in the operation. We executed some warrants for that. The detective leading that was in at five o'clock in the morning and he stayed on working all the way through until half past one at night to ensure that there was sufficient evidence taken to CPS, explain to them, and get a charge, and that person's now been arrested. Been you know Um, has been in the past. Not at the moment. Um, but I've certainly had the illness in the past. I've arrested in the past. In the so that's where we're at. Whether well, there's enough yet to get into your job, the investigation continues because there's a lot, lots happening behind the scenes. Once you know somebody and who their associates are, it can really speed up the investigation. But I'm not going to make any promises that they'll definitely get charged to you. So that's that. Any questions about that before I put you on? Inspector Evans, what does a very, very long time mean? They'll be put away for a very, very long time. Right, if we get him charged convicted for that aggravated burglary, if he gets less than 10 years, I'll be really surprised. I'd, I'd expect it to be more because that was a really nasty offence. So, 10 years plus, I'll be hoping for that. We'll be hoping. John, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, when you say about working as a partnership, us as a community, work alongside with the police, mm -hmm. do you have the legal rights to be able to show us images of people that you are looking for? Because ultimately, without people informing you, you won't know where these people are. No, it, it, it's, it's really a call for the detectives. And occasionally you'll see it comes out in the press, the police are looking for this person, don't approach them because they're dangerous. And all the time we've got to review what we're doing to find that person, mm. because there's some sneaky beaky stuff we could be doing to try and find somebody. And we may not want to blow that out by putting it in the press. So if we do come to yourselves, there's a reason for it. If we don't come to yourselves, there's also a reason for it, there's stuff going on in the background. But again, you may not see that. Are they part of a gang, or is there a gang leader? Mm, I think there's... And is it hail, or is it either from Withenshaw? No, no. They're, they're not from Withenshaw? Not, not from Withenshaw. I think you've got a group of people who have been committing a number of offences, and it may be some people are doing it, they're part of a group, some may go and do that, some may, some may go and do that. It may depend on who's free on the day. Are they from abroad? No. no. Not at all. And that brings me on to the Ashley Hotel. Mm -hmm. we've, take, we've taken a good long look at that, because I know there were rumours that there were people abroad who were working for National Hotel and Court for the crime. No, not at all. No evidence for that whatsoever. We've had three incidents at the Ashley Hall Hotel. We've had very tragically a death. We've had a noisy party and we've had somebody drunk outside. We have sent in our licensing officer. She's the lady who looks at any licensed premises that sell alcohol. We've sent in our state of communities officer from traffic Road. And we've looked at that hotel, so it's the fire service, and we've looked at their processes. And it has to be quite tight. There was an issue that up to about six weeks ago, they were getting people placed with them by coach having to people in the city centre. They've got to go somewhere, but they were placing them there. The owners became aware of that and stopped that, so you don't get any referrals from homeless people into that hotel. If you want a book to go there, you've got to do it online. You've got to provide proof of who you are, and you've got to book with a credit card. You can't walk in off the street, pay cash, use a card, just do it, and you've got to go through the booking system. Their doors are locked at 10. If you want to get in, you've got to press a buzzer so the night porter can see you. <coughs> if you're not a resident and you're trying to get in after it's shut, you don't get in. And they're going to work with us. If there's people coming to go in the night, they're not aware of it, but they'll let us know about that. So I know that I'm concerned about that, but we've had a good long detailed look at that. Uh, and there's nothing to suggest that there are people staying at that hotel who are causing crime or, or um, passing information to people. John, there was three incidents on the car park and there was one in front of Jojo Mallet at 12.30. Okay. <coughs> what we have done is we have distributed letters to all the council house to all <coughs> the local businesses saying if you experience any kind of ASB, they write to a fellow called Ian Underhill, he will look at that and collate it. Because unless we can say that business, that business 
he's causing crime or antisocial behaviour, and we can evidence that, there's nothing we can do. If there is evidence to say that, yet yeah, there's powers of the council can do. So at the moment, we've had a good hard look at it, and there's nothing to say there's crime being covered by it. <coughs> but if that evidence comes to light, we'll review that, we'll look at it. And that's the process we're in at the moment. I was also told by somebody that was, they have informers who sit around cafes where all the girls like, the, the, sit and follow There's lots of stuff that people say, somebody's told me this, somebody's told me that. You've got to be cautious of this. I was shown some footage yesterday that's happened in Hale. And it was a lady who was delivering a package from CCTV. And as the doors open, somebody steps up to the face and does CS gas. That's happened in Hale, that has. No, that has. <coughs> not at all. That's not any of our systems. I asked all my staff who work around here, we would know that happened. You've got to be real cautious of what somebody told me, because that increases fear. Yeah. Right. That just does not happen. Just and you can get clips from all the Chinese whispers. And there's an awful <coughs> lot of Chinese whispers that, that's happening there. And that makes people feel scared. Mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm really right. sorry, uh, we are running short of time. So okay, can I have two minutes on that ground? Yeah, okay, that ground. Um, we asked, the Metropolitan University of Manchester do some research around knife crime. There is an issue with knife crime in Manchester. The good news is that Trafford is really low. The amount of knife crime that we contribute to the whole GMP is 4.5%. That includes any incident where a knife has been mentioned. So knife crime in Trafford is really, really low. Op Sycamore is the force's response to knife crime. The government's given us, as GMP, and all forces, a lot of money. We've been given £370,000 to combat knife crime. We're using £70,000 for boots on the street wearing yellow jackets going to areas where we might get incidents of knife crime, such as the interchange at Ultraman or places around Old Trafford. <coughs> we have real low numbers of that, but we're putting boots on the ground there. With. We just don't get those numbers of it. £300,000 is being spent on the education with schools. We have lost a generation of kids where we haven't been in schools telling them at an early age what's right and what's wrong from the police's perspective and others. So £300,000 has been spent on creating some packages and going into the schools and teaching the teachers how to deliver that so it's sustainable. You need to get in, we need to get into primary schools when kids are five and say, knives ain't great, what do you do if you find a knife so they know it's bad? Because that sticks with them. Kids who have been told that salt is bad for them at five don't eat a lot of salt when they grow up. You get them when they're young. So we need inputs when they're five and when they're probably about nine of absolute there, and then at the high schools, and that's the package that's being developed at the moment. So we need to get in there, educate kids, get this generation so they know it's not acceptable to have a knife, and at the same time, target those who are currently carrying knives. And that's the work that's happening at the moment. that makes sense? We're also hoping to have young um, outreach workers on the streets, so that when we've got police officers on the streets, and we're engaging with children. We all know they're not going to speak to cops because we're not cool enough. We don't understand we're wearing a uniform. We can be understanding, but we, we're not on their wavelength. So what we're also doing look at, with Helen's team is looking up to invest money in outreach workers, youth workers, 